My name is Chris Coyne, and I'm the F.A. Harper Professor of Economics at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University and the Associate Director of the F.A. Hayek Program for Advanced Study in Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. Today I'm joined by Robert Higgs, who is a Senior Fellow in Political Economy at the Independent Institute and is the Editor-at-Large of the Institute's quarterly journal, The Independent Review. Bob, welcome. Thank you very much, Chris. What do you view as some of the key distinctions between Austrian economics and mainstream economics? Uh, I think there's several. One of them is that Austrian economics uh, treats subjectivism uh, as a very serious matter and keeps it in mind at all times. Uh, there's a tendency in neoclassical economics to recognize subjectivism uh, when one first starts thinking about utility theory and then to forget it and to fall into formalism and to fall into the implicit if not explicit assumption that things that are not measurable can be measured uh, and to begin to think that third parties can assess costs, for example. Uh, the whole basis of cost-benefit analysis, uh, which is a kind of subfield of neoclassical economics, presumes that costs and benefits can be measured by third parties. And of course, sometimes people will say, well, that's because we measure them via market prices. But because there are no market prices for many of the costs and benefits uh, these analysts are trying to assess, they have to fall into other forms of third party evaluation or appraisal. And when they do that, they're really uh, not only overlooking a thorough subjectivism, but they're abandoning it. They're, they're uh, working in a way that is contrary to it. They're presuming that third parties can know things that indeed cannot be known by any third parties, but only by the decision makers themselves. So uh, subjectivism is one of the, the key differences. Um, uh, there's also a great difference in uh, the extent to which Austrians think formalism is a valuable thing for its own sake. Uh, modern uh, neoclassical economics is dominated by formal analysis. I've encountered many people who, who re reacted to work of different kinds, including sometimes my own work, uh, basically by saying, if you've got no formal model, you've got nothing. In other words, there's this insistence that there's only one way to do economics. It's by formal mathematical modeling. And if you try to get economic knowledge or information by any other means, you're just wasting your time. Uh, there's no hope or any, any other alternative way of learning about economic life. Uh, Austrians uh, disavow that kind of formalism. Uh, some Austrians certainly appreciate that formal models can be revealing, they can be insightful, but they have to be formulated very carefully to avoid the pitfalls of making assumptions that one knows what cannot be known by anyone but the actors. And uh, that's a pitfall that's, in general, not avoided in neoclassical economics. Uh, there's a lot of presumption. Hayek complained again and again and again that people were assuming away in their analysis what, uh, in fact, was uh, the core of what we were trying to understand. They were simply assuming that people knew things like all the, all the prevailing prices in the market, when what people were trying to do was to, discover prices at which they could uh, buy or sell or might buy or sell or uh, discovering the prices at which they eventually did agree to buy and sell and that that discovery procedure was ongoing it was constant it was not something that the world would stop while the neoclassical economist solved his equations and said ah oh, that's the equilibrium set of prices so I think the, the, the formal modeling question is a, a huge distinction between uh, Austrians and neoclassical e economists. Uh, I think there's also a, a difference in that uh, Austrians tend to think in terms of the process of economic life. 
whereas neoclassical economists think in terms of equilibrium configurations. They, 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 they search for the equilibrium of a model. And even if it's said to be a dynamic model, it still has a definite equilibrium trajectory. That is the answer to the question they've posed. Uh, but whether it's static or dynamic, uh, it's still the case that they're, they're treating the problem as, as it were, fixed. Uh, you, you can work toward the answer, and voila, you've got it. Uh, and of course, if you use welfare economics, you can say, for example, oh, this is, a, this is an answer. It tells me the world is inefficient. So that means that the government could intervene uh, in ways that would move it toward an efficient configuration. Uh, Austrians uh, treat efficiency very differently. They treat efficiency as basically whatever free traders in the market do. That's efficient. Uh, because no one else can say that something would be better. No one else has the information to displace the actual actor's evaluations of costs and benefits. So those would be some of the major differences I would uh, think of between uh, Austrian economics and neoclassical economics. There, there are a number of others, and uh, if one wants to talk about philosophical and uh, epistemological questions, uh, uh, there are certainly some there too.